Wow, I'm in a thrift shop, a really sort of junky thrift shop, and I just found... There's an old curiosity shop Every once in a while I go by there For the fond recollections that lie there Well, Scott, where in the heck are you? Well, if you take a look at the name of the bar over there, it'll give you a clue. The L bar. What's EL short for? EL is short for Elevated Train. And there it is right there, the Elevated Train in Philly called the Market Frankfurt L. Because depending on which direction you take, you're either headed towards Frankfurt uh, or you're traveling all the way underneath uh, Market Street. So it's elevated over here on Frankfurt Avenue, but it becomes a subterranean train goes underground when it gets when it goes underneath of Market Street through Philadelphia all the way over to as far as 50 something or other 56 57th uh, Street in West Philadelphia. And it uh, was put up I think in the 1920s or 30s, still very operational today, and thousands of people use this old Market Frankfurt L. Now the area underneath the train has seen its ups and downs. Once a very thriving uh, thoroughfare, boy, it really has declined. It is nice to see old buildings being brought back to life. Now this one over here called the M, I'm sorry, the uh, W.M. Mueller and Sons, M Mueller and Sons building, that had been abandoned for years and years and years and I always thought it had good bones. Not too long ago, it has been uh, reconditioned and opened up. It's a very nice restaurant now, so you can just hop on the train in Center City, be over here in seconds. So I know it looks a little on the gritty side. Hey, it's part of the charm of big old cities, northeastern cities, and what Philadelphians, a lot of us really like about the city of Philadelphia. Okay, enough of that. I'm gonna cross the street and uh, try not to get hit by any cars. I am in the middle of the street right now. <laughs> uh, or any trains. I was hoping the train would come by so you could get a chance to see it. For those of you who are not city folk, there it is right there. And sometimes when I don't feel like driving, I do just jump on the train. Uh, although it's very difficult to take uh, oak wash stands back to your condominium when you drive the train, when you take the train. I'm on my way to a little gift shop, thrift shop, antique shop which has been closed for the pandemic and it's a small thing shop and so they were not comfortable reopening. They have now reopened and we're gonna go walk around inside and see what's what. There's the train, hold on. Okay, we caught the tail end of it anyway. Okay, as I said, heading back here to the shop I want to take us into. I'll do a little filming inside, walk around. I used to find a lot in there uh, and then sort of the buying scheme changed and instead of there being a lot of 1920s and 30s, most of the items became mid-century. So well, we may find some interesting mid-century. Let's go see. That's a wonderful coffee shop. Well, actually a hair and skin place, but right next to it is the coffee shop with the red arrow facing down over the front door. And then the antique store is called Jinxed Fish Town. So believe it or not, uh, we just went from what would be considered Frankfurt over to, to Fish Town. Uh, 
the streets are the dividing line for the neighborhoods and folks in Philly are very territorial about their neighborhoods. One block to the next can be a completely different neighborhood and I suppose that's the way it is in many uh, large cities. So let's head into Jinxed Fishtown and see what's what. I simply cannot resist. <laughs> oh, I love it. Where am I going? Oh, this way. Well, here I am at an early morning flea market. This is on Friday. This flea market is on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, it's in a very strange section of Philadelphia. It's a tiny flea market. It's a parking lot. And, oh, I don't know, there might only be about 50 people that pull up in here to sell. Uh, it's in, well, let me turn around and kind of give you the scope of it. As usual, it's just in an old neighborhood. We're down near the river. And if you look all the way, squint your eyes and look past the, there's an old brick factory on the left. You'll see a, just a pinch of the Delaware River. You don't see too much of it. A pinch of it? Yeah, just a pinch of it. Anyway, so this is kind of like a factory warehouse district and it's got some old oh, Turn of the century row houses and typically this flea market is candles Baby clothes tube socks. It's not really known as an antique uh, Venue <laughs> we'll say that But it, I like to come uh, because I never know sometimes I find old electronic sockets, uh, electronic pieces to rewire lamps and whatnot. I want to show you what I did find and let me move to another spot and you might be surprised. I was very surprised at what I found today. Be right back. Okay, for three dollars I have an original watercolor. This is going to date from the mid-twenties up to, well, 1920 up to about 1930. You can see the frame needs a lot of cleaning, but you can see it's an original watercolor. Value, just decorative. Uh, whoever did it did a, did a nice job, I would say. I hope you can see it. Let me get it in the shade. Well, maybe that, well, we'll look at it twice. Here it is in the shade. That's a little bit better. Anytime you see these frames with this blue paint, uh, I always think of Fox Prince, Maxfield Parish Prince. This is a style of frame that becomes enormously popular after the turn of the century and it stays popular up until about 1930. Um, there'll be a very small, very delicate embossed design on the frame and almost always blue paint. Sometimes the paint is green, but blue was the desired color. And this, is, this blue will come up re really nicely when I get it all cleaned up and put some wax on it. The blue will sort of pop out of there and really look nice with this blue vase. Uh, so there you go, a nice large original artwork from, again, circa 19, as late as 1930, but probably a little older than that. And I love how they just, you know, salvaged a piece of old cardboard here. And all we have up in the corner is something company New York. It's probably a cardboard box that an amateur artist did this painting on. I'll set this back down. I think it's upside down now. No, there, it's okay two books I wasn't uh, this one was free the lady <laughs> said all the books are free and they're too heavy she didn't want to take them home so who can go wrong with a book on uh, Christmas recipes and maybe this year I'll actually be able to have some folks over to eat some of the stuff that I make we won't be hiding I hope not so that was free now the shock of all shocks here at this flea market for two dollars Imperial Glass, the Imperial Glass Company, 1904 to 1938 catalogs. This was two dollars at this flea market. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I do not have a catalog on, on on Imperial Glass. And what I love is these are actually pictures from the old catalogs. So they've been reproduced. So we're going to get complete descriptions, measurements,
the names of the different pieces. For instance, I would call that a pitcher and they call it a jug. Jug. So I just love seeing this. Blown glass made by our own process. I am thrilled to get this. And again, you know I have a, a growing collection and I'm happy to have my collection to continue to grow. This helps me be a better buyer and seller. Okay, that was that. So didn't spend a whole lot of money and uh, found some interesting things and all uh, early in the morning before I head off to the post office. I'm in the parking lot here in the back of the flea, mar flea market. And you can see it's just an industrial part of the city down here near, uh, uh, near the river. But um, coming over here just a little bit more, it is uh, still a neighborhood. You can see the old row houses there through the fence. Duplexes, actually. Okay, everyone, that's it. Let me hop back in this truck and the adventure continues. Okay, I guess that's not that bad considering uh, you get all those plates. One, two, three, four, five. Especially the five dinner plates. Uh, if they're not chipped, that's pretty good because they're a little bit harder to find. The Anchor Hocking Bubble uh, dinner plates. Hmm. That's still a little bit more than I want, so. <laughs> you know how I am. We'll see. I'm at an indoor thrift shop located at a flea market, you know, so it's one of these permanent places. Indoor. Certainly. those but these look old and pretty well made huh better than I thought for Japan oh it's only one I said these I thought he ha oh it's a mirror okay see that's why I thought there were two but he's all by himself It's getting hot again all over the country. Well, it's been nice here in the east. We've had 70s and no humidity and it's coming back. Okay. Lamps, lamps, lamps. Oh, did you hear that lady? As soon as it comes in, it goes out. It goes quick. She said, shouldn't that be quickly? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to critique. I make grammatical errors all the time. Look at this. I don't know if that's... Hold on for a second. $20. Sometimes these are from the 70s and sometimes they're from the 30s. I don't know about that one. It looks like it's got some hand painting on it. Now she's got her glass, in my opinion, priced pretty top dollar. Let's look at a few prices here. See, that's 20 bucks. Am I out of focus? That's $20 for that. Can't do anything there. This looks like it's pink 40s, 50s ceiling shade. All right, no big deal on the lamps. I realize I'm going way out of order here. I don't know what that is. That is, I don't know, something new. And it's down there in a Pyrex dish. Let's just look at some depression prices. See, that's 13. 
uh, you know, 13 for that. This is cute, this bird playing an accordion or a concertina. Bluebird. Oh, it's Lefton. But see, they want $17 for it. And it even has a little chip on it. Here's another ashtray. Now, I know a lot of you got mad at me because I didn't buy that Scotty Dog ashtray. And um, I certainly know that these can be used as trinket dishes and, and for jewelry and keys and false teeth and all that stuff. Um, I just still, you know, it's an ashtray. I do know people uh, repurpose these and use them as trinket dishes. Here we have a souvenir of Wildwood, New Jersey. But it's still a 1930s piece. And that one has no price on it. So. Uh, because the, the Scotty Dog thing I was going to keep for myself. And I personally, just me personally, kind of don't buy the ashtrays to use as trinket dishes. but I know a lot of people do. So, maybe I'll go back and get it when it's reduced, the Scotty Dog. Okay, I'm just rambling. Okay, someone is looking at me, staring at me, I think because I'm filming. But I'm not filming them. Let's see what this is. Ooh, $18 for that green. Yep, can't do that. Can't do it. What's this? 25 Well... I don't know. She said things go in the door and out the door. Yep. I don't know. I'm going out the door. <laughs> but I can't resell at that price. What's that back there? Those are a bunch of pink depression and those are $15 each. Okay. So you kind of get the picture. The depression glass here is priced pretty much where it would be in an antique store. Okay. Well, I'm not finished. Well, I've left the flea market and on the way home I decided to stop at a Goodwill, which I don't normally do on Saturday because it's usually mobbed. Anyway, I'm glad I did because today is depression glass overload. A lot of depression glass here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with some of this the way they package it up. Um, you know, I'm not going to take the tape off of this. I'm going to feel it over really carefully, as carefully as I can, for chips or cracks. So here we've got some pink and some amber. A lot of green, which would be uranium. And then uh, this set right here, which is a light amber color. And I'm excited because I don't know if you can peek through there and you see, can you see a little bit of an Art Deco design? There you go, look at that. There are some interesting looking birds and some Art Deco etching on there. So I can't wait to see what that is. And then in two separate bags, here is the sugar bowl. And then in this bag over here is, is the creamer all thrown down in there with, I see some block optic and some swirl. So there's all kinds of stuff here. Um, and I'll be showing you that once I get it unwrapped and cleaned. And then I'm also going to purchase this wonderful mid-century lamp. Let me back up so you can see the whole thing. Look at this. The bottom of it is a piece of steel, and I'm going to have to clean this up, but the rest of it is in good condition. 
Um, and what I noticed, uh, what's really neat about this lamp is uh, here's a, uh, an extension, of course, and an on-off switch. And there's actually a light bulb up under here, which throws light down indirectly to the floor. And it's not a reproduction. If we turn it upside down, which I'm not going to do here in the store, I'll do that outside and show you. Um, but I wasn't really sure if it, uh, you know, too much about it. The color, meh. You know, the color is just the color, but it's definitely got that awesome uh, mid-century feel to it. And it's only $9. This is a little sort of 19, uh, late 30s, early 40s, 30s, 40s. I'm never over the top about it when it sort of has this sort of fake, um, fake tooled leather top. This one is okay, um, but it's seen better days it's something that I could repair but I just don't need another project like this and so I'm gonna leave this table here for someone else to discover but uh, anyway I'm happy with my mid-century lamp and my depression glass and for a dollar fifty a little old bell with a wooden green handle and I won't ring it because I don't want anyone to think that I am in distress and have people come running. Okay, let's see what else we can get into. Okay, ignore the truck that needs to be washed. I paid $9.99 for this Kurt Versen Mid-Century Modern Lamp, which is probably gonna sell for way over $100 at least. I'm so excited. It really is in good condition. A uh, little bit of paint uh, cleaning up has to be done on the bottom. But as I said, there's an actual light bulb under here. so indirect light sh shines down and there are two on and off switches one for the lamp up top and one for the indirect light on the bottom but there's the paint on the top is really good there's no problem with chips or cracks and I like how you can direct the light so with this little cup turned this way the light is directed out the top to your ceiling and then if you spin this Oops, get it in the frame. If you spin it this way, then the light shines down. So very nice piece. I'm gonna guess it dates to the 1960s. You know me, I don't know a great deal about mid-century, but I do recognize it when I see it. And this is a nice labeled piece. Again, let me back up so you can see the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good find. I am also really thrilled to share with you this cabinet which I paid $9.99 for in that thrift shop at the uh, farmer's market. You can see it's a beautiful cabinet there and a lot of you already know what you think is inside. It's not a bread box, thank you Steve Allen. A uh, little reference there to what's my line. I knew what it was the minute I saw it and I was pretty certain that at $9.99 the original contents would be gone and when I opened the lid of course the original contents uh, were, was, were, was gone let's get that bag out of there that wasn't in there anyway you can see what it was right now let's close the lid well we won't close the lid it's an old radio cabinet and you would pull the front down like that and then the radio would be inside now it's not missing anything it didn't have legs it is a tabletop model um, it probably, it, well, it's not missing legs, but it's probably missing four little bun feet that were probably under here. And no one has refinished it. This is a mixture of mahogany and walnut veneer in different uh, uh, shades, different staining, the way they would do at that time. And this is what's called an aftermarket uh, cabinet. These cabinets were made by furniture companies and you could stick any kind of uh, radio that you wanted down on the inside of it. Say so you could buy uh, like an Atwater Kent chassis and just stick it down into the into the cabinet. Now it's in its original condition. It's coming apart here. It looks like maybe somebody dropped it. So we've got going to have to do some it's cracked back there. I'm gonna have to do some glue and clamping, but I am gonna be able to get this uh, cabinet completely back to its original condition. 
and then I will find a nice old 1920, late 1920s radio chassis to stick down inside of it. And we'll have an antique radio set. So it's a fine old cabinet, as I said, in original finish. Look at the alligator hide. Can you see that? I would never in a million years strip this shellac off. It took a long time to get those wrinkles in there, and as far as I'm concerned, they should stay there. That is the character of this old radio. I am so excited to have found this.